Hi guys, Mark here. I hope you are well. Today's tutorial is going to cover the process of making an adjustable dog collar adapter. So if you're serious about making dog collars and you want a perfect fit for your dog collars, this is the way to go. Now there are a few ways of making an adjustable dog collar adapter. This way uses the minimal supplies and tools, so I think it is a good starting point. Here is how the adapter works. We weave the rest of our dog collar in between these two points here. This closes our dog collar. We have a D-ring for attaching a dog leash, a buckle, which opens and closes our dog collar, and finally this sliding part here, which adds adjustability to our dog collar. Before we build our adapter, a couple of important notes. First, the width of our adapter is determined completely by the width of our weaving. So if our weaving is an inch wide, so is our adapter. Secondly, this part here, from the buckle up to here, determines the adjustability of your adapter. So the longer that this part is, the more adjustable your dog collar is going to be. On the other hand though, the longer that this part is, the less weaving you have available. So you need a nice balance between your weaving and your adapter. Now, if I extend my adapter all the way, this distance here is 4 inches. If I shorten it completely, this length here is a bit over 2 inches. So the adjustability here is about 40 to 50 percent. When building your dog collar, you're aiming for the middle here, so that you can either shorten or lengthen your dog collar adapter depending on what you need. For the supplies, you're first going to need a length of webbing. There are many different materials, colors, textures available. Basically what you want is something that you can melt to finish it off. Like this. A buckle is going to be used as the closing mechanism. Usually, these are made out of plastic, sometimes out of metal. If you can find one, use a curved one, since it fits the neck of the dog a bit better. A webbing slider or a glide can easily be found in plastic and again sometimes in metal. A couple of rectangular rings or more commonly a couple of D-rings are going to be used to attach our weaving onto the adapter. Thread is going to be used to stitch everything together. For maximum strength I recommend waxed polyester thread. A couple of sharp stitching needles are going to be used for our stitching. I highly recommend that you buy the longest stitching needles that you can find. The longer they are, the less stress they're going to put on your hands. A bulldog clamp can be used to hold your work in place while you're stitching. Finally, scissors and a lighter are used for any cutting and melting tasks. We're first going to set up the adjustable part here. Take your webbing, take your webbing slider, feed the webbing through,
लाइक दस And we're going to stitch these two parts here together. I use a clamp to hold everything together and as a guide for a straight line. Take your two needles. A piece of thread, thread one of your needles, then pierce your thread, like this. On the other side, exactly the same way. So you thread your needle, pierce your thread, like this. We are now going to pierce our two layers from one side. Like this. If you need help getting the needle through, you can use a pair of pliers. Make sure that the two ends of your thread are of equal length. Then stitch from one side trying to line up your stitches in a straight line. So from one side then from the other at about the same point. Tighten up and to repeat. So from one side, from the other, Tighten up. Try not to pierce one end with the other end. The two pieces of thread should go through the webbing, not through each other as well. So again, from one side, then from the other. Tighten up and continue.
Once you reach the other side, we are going to reverse direction, adding a second row of stitches for extra security and strength. So again, we start on one side, then on the other, tighten up. From one side, then the other, tighten up. So this completes our stitching. Now we are going to bring our two ends to the same side. So usually the side that's not visible. So let's say that this side is going to be the underside. So I'm going to bring this piece of thread to the other side. like this trim the two ends melt them like this and our first stitching is complete. So now what we're going to do is attach our buckle. So for now I haven't cut my webbing, I'm going to do it a bit later on. So I feed my webbing like this bottom up to do here so 
So as you can see, bottom up, through here, through here, finally through here. Now select the size for this adjustable part here. I think 4 inches is the bare minimum. So once you've done this, we're going to attach our rectangular ring or a D ring depending on what you have. So here, We're going to stitch our ring on like this. Folding our working hand, so the long part, to the bottom, then stitching. For now I'm going to do a rough cut. like this thread my two needles and to do my stitching. Make sure that the two ends are of equal length And at least make sure that on the visible top side you have some nice stitching. The bottom isn't really that important. You don't want your needle piercing the other thread. So if you do this, simply pull it back, remove the thread, and continue stitching. Then reverse direction, stitching back to the other side.
Once you've done your stitching, bring your thread down to the non-visible side. So in my case here, Trim the two ends, melt them, and this part of the adapter is complete. Now the other part of our adapter. Take your webbing. Attach a D-ring, pass through your buckle, and fold your webbing like this. We first stitch before the D-ring, then we have our D-ring, then we stitch again, and finally we are going to attach our rectangular ring or D-ring, and again fold and stitch our webbing. So first a row of stitches. Then a second stitch after the D-ring. After our second stitch, we do our final one, attaching our rectangular ring or D-ring. So here. So finally, after the three stitchings, we clean up the bottom, trimming our webbing. So something like this. With that our adapter is complete. So guys, that's one way of making an adjustable dock color adapter. Thank you very much for joining me today, consider supporting the site on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.